Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm James, or J Hansen Art, and today we're going to be doing a video going over some of the most frequently asked questions I get uh, when I broadcast my paintings or illustrations on Twitch. Uh, if you're not aware, I do uh, live broadcasts on twitch.tv slash jhansen underscore art. All the links and stuff are down below. Probably a little like, text thing popping up like over here. Um, but basically, uh, as a streamer, um, I've been doing this for almost four years on Twitch, and people come into my channel, uh, brand new faces every time I go live, so I do get a lot of the same or similar questions on a, uh, a repeat basis, which is not a bad thing at all, but I figured why not make sort of a quick tip section on the YouTube channel that I can uh, refer people back to and maybe answer some of the more common questions or if people are just looking around YouTube looking for help or information then maybe this will be an asset to you. So this will be the first of I hope many uh, quick tip resource video guides for folks and today we're just going to be discussing the bare bones how do you set up your canvas when you paint. Uh, we're going to be discussing things like uh, resolutions, um, you know, what resolutions do I paint in, what considerations should you make when you're actually choosing your file size, DPI, uh, background canvas colors, and maybe a couple other like odds and ends, but it's sort of this, just the basics to get you um, with your blank canvas set up properly uh, so you can actually start drawing, sketching, painting, whatever you want to do. And uh, start making some stuff and uh, share it with the world. So that being said, thanks for being here everybody. I uh, hope you enjoy the video and let's go. This is sort of an example of what I would typically do on one of my streams. Um, I like to do portraiture. I do a lot of uh, just interesting references I might find around the web. But um, I like to do actual sketches and full paintings in some of my sessions as practice and conversation points on Twitch. So if you're ever interested in sort of seeing how a piece like this might come together, uh, stop by the Twitch channel. But otherwise, let's get a new file going here. So obviously, very, very simple stuff. Let's go up to File. We'll click on New or Control N for the hotkey. It's going to pop up a menu like this. And from this menu, what you can see is there is width, heights, resolutions, color modes, all this fun stuff. Uh, don't be overwhelmed. You can even name your file here too. Uh, if you click on this little pull down menu here where it says document type, you can actually see some things like default Photoshop size, um, default sort of US or international paper settings, etc, etc. I've actually created a handful of presets that I use on a regular basis right here too. So I'll talk about this in just a moment. So a piece like you see in the background, I typically work in a 4000 by 5000 pixel resolution. So you can literally just click in, type in your, your width, your height, uh, make sure obviously if you're working with pixels, if you want to work with the pixel uh, as your dimension, make sure that's your actual selection here. But you can specify uh, into inches, different sizes, uh, imperial metric, etc, etc. And also for resolution, I always work in 300 uh, pixels per inch, basically your, that's your DPI measurement right there. So this is my default, this is what I work with quite a bit. A lot of my work is done in this 4000 by 5000 pixel scale because it actually translates into an 8 inch by 10 inch uh, printing format very, very cleanly. 4000 by 5000 is a 4 to 5 ratio. If you double 4 to 5, it actually ends up being 8 to 10 or 8 inch by 10 inches. So that's how I kind of figure that out in my mind. Obviously, 4,000 pixels does not translate to 8, uh, 8 by 10 inches. As you can see here, if we switch these over from pixels to inches, it's actually 13 and a third by 16 and 2 thirds. Uh, but it will scale down appropriately to the 8 by 10. So this brings me to my first point. You need to figure out, especially if it's commission or uh, client-based work, what is the client, uh, what, what's, what's their need? What, what size do they have to actually have this piece, whether it be uh, utilized for a website, if it's being physically printed out onto canvas or a, a physical print of some sort? What size do they need? Uh, do you need to actually factor in things like standard framing sizes, right? Uh, is this piece going to be printed onto canvas, stretched? Is it going to be actually fitted within a mat in an actual frame? Then yeah, you probably want to consider things like what are very standardized uh, framing sizes, right? So for me, again, I do lots of wedding portraits. Uh, a lot of my clients are getting these printed onto canvas. Um, 
matte and frame mounted um, in an 8 by 10 inch format. So I typically work a bit bigger. Again, I do the 4,000 by 5,000 pixel ratio. Uh, so I, I know it will meet that ratio of 8 by 10 inches that I need. I also like working slightly bigger. Again, if you look here, this is actually 13 a third by 16 and some change. Uh, this allows me some flexibility in room too. So in case it has to be ever printed larger, I have that flexibility to do so without any image clarity loss, okay? So sometimes if you have a specific size in mind that you need to produce your work at, you may want to work slightly larger to allow you the flexibility to downscale. That way, for whatever reason, if you had to actually produce a larger print, the quality would still be there. So that's, that's my recommendation. Another example here is I have a default document size of 16 and a half by 21 inches. So for me, I actually, when I produce art prints, my art prints are either 10 by 10 inches or they're 11 by 14 inches. So same methodology, I like to use some of my actual prints, my art pieces and illustrations that I do for commissions, um, as well as prints that I sell at uh, you know, conventions and whatnot. I sometimes will actually print these into larger formats, to bigger, you know, three foot tall banners, etc. So I work larger. Uh, my 11 by 14 canvas size, I work 50% uh, larger in uh, file size. So my 11 by 14 formats, I typically work 16 and a half by 21. It's just, it's a, a slightly larger format. And again, it scales down to the 11 by 14 sizing and ratio that I need. So those are just things that you'd want to consider. Um, if you have formats, if you have particular dimensions that you like, that you want to maintain, um, what you can do is once you have your, your width, your height, your resolution, etc. specified, you can literally just do uh, save as preset, which will pop up here. You can actually indicate what you want to check off, resolution, color mode, blah, blah, blah. Yada, yada, yada. Just make sure if, if all the things that you want to keep are checked off and then you can actually name the preset. So I have 16 and a half inches by 21 inches saved already as a preset. I could theoretically rename it to my 11 by 14 default. That's how you choose your settings. That's how you can also add your own custom setting defaults here. So with that being said, let's open this up. We'll get a new file opened up. You can see my background canvas, if I color pick this, it's actually uh, about 25-ish percent into the gray here. Uh, if you are a painter, you do not want to work on a white canvas. Working on white canvas, we'll talk more about this later on, but uh, white canvas backgrounds will really distort and skew your, uh, your values that you're actually deciphering, whether you're working in grayscale or color. Uh, that typically is not going to be a, a format you want to work on. If you notice over here on the right side, it says background. There's a little lock mechanism here. Uh, basically, this is the default background layer. Um, I typically don't really touch this or work off this very often, but if you want to be able to work off this layer, all you gotta do is uh, double click on it, hit OK. It basically converts it into a, a normal workable layer format right there. Uh, if you need to see that again, double click. It says new layer. Uh, you can basically just ignore the rest, hit OK. I know that's not the most informative answer, but literally it just hitting OK will convert this into a normal uh, layer uh, file type so you can actually draw away there if you want to. Again, I typically don't work off this layer, but I like to have the flexibility in case I need to stretch or modify this layer for whatever reason. So the next step is let's get another new layer on top of your background. You can do that by clicking this little uh, icon to the left of your trash bin. That's your new layer icon right there. Or Control Shift N will do the exact same thing for you too. You'll see when you hit Control Shift N, it'll pop up a little menu. Uh, you can actually name your layers. If you're gonna be really fancy, you could be proactive and name layers as you create them. My layers are typically a mess. But uh, yeah, that's all you do right there. And if you notice, uh, right here on your layer tab, we now have two layers, our background gray layer. There's these little windows here, which are kind of, uh, they give you an indicator of what's physically on the layer. So again, our background layer formally is the all gray. Here is layer one, and if we, do some scribbling. 
you can see it kind of fills a little bit on there. It's, it's kind of tough to see, but this will give you a mini preview of what we have physically on the layer. So now that we have another layer set up here, you're good to go. This is your layer that you can start sketching, painting, do whatever you want. You can even animate in Photoshop too. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll do a video down the road regarding that, because in case you didn't know, I used to do all my animation in Photoshop, which was kind of wild. Um, that's pretty fun too, actually. But this is your bare bones setup right here. We have our canvas created to the appropriate size. We have our background layer all set with a nice gray tone. We have a new layer on top ready to be drawn on or painted on, and we're good to go. So this is literally all you need to do to get started. All right, thank you so much for being here today, everybody. I have a lot more quick tip stuff coming out. So if you do like this kind of uh, quick and dirty content, consider subscribing to the channel. Um, I have a lot more stuff in mind that I really want to talk about involving value work. Um, I want to talk about the Loomis method and sort of facial uh, anatomy and proportions. There's a lot more stuff coming, not to mention I want to do a lot more sort of time-lapse paintings and tutorials in that sense too. So thanks for being here everybody. Have a phenomenal week and I'll talk to you soon. All right.